This is Cameron Chai from Azom on behalf of VCAM coming to you from the Carbon Fibre Future Direction Conference in Geelong, Australia. The conference has been organised by VCAM and Deakin University and is sponsored by VCAM and Deakin University as well as the Victorian Government. Today I'm speaking to Associate Professor Bronwyn Fox from the Centre for Materials and Fibre Innovation and I'd like to welcome her to the program today. Thank you very much. Alright Bronwyn, what does the Centre for Materials and Fibre Innovation do? We do a, a whole lot of cutting edge materials research and the group started very much from a focus of being relevant to industry and doing research that makes a difference to industry and from that experience in working with industry we've able to been able to uh, look at some really interesting fundamental problems that also happen to be relevant to industry. Okay. And the materials that you most commonly work with, you've been working on composite materials for the last... I have. I, I started at Deakin 10 years ago this month and they had a really strong group in textiles research and a really strong group in steel research and they were looking to expand that materials base and move into more carbon fibre composite. So I was brought in to set up their carbon fibre composite research group um, and we've seen a huge period of growth over the last 10 years. It's been a very exciting time and during that time we formed a very strong link with a company called Quickstep and that's, that's um, a lot of our initial research was it, it, around the quick step process and sort of getting the data that really validated that the process worked for the company and it's been a great success because when we started working with quick step in well the early 2000s they were a company of three employees and now a company of 44 they're moving um, from their existing premises in Fremantle to larger premises in New South Wales and they're producing, about to go into production for parts for Lockheed Martin for the Joint Strike Fighter. So That's a pretty good achievement. Yeah, it's very, been very exciting for all of us. Okay, more recently you, Deacon and uh, VCAM have, have put together a consortium or an organisation such as now you've formed the, the ACFRF. That's correct, the Australian Carbon Fibre Research Facility. So um, VCAM we've worked with very closely for a long, well since they started um, and we've had enormous benefit from, from working with them. It's made us a lot more focused on industry relevant research. It's been a really, really interesting time. So it was, I guess maybe five or six years ago, Brad and I um, were talking to Professor Andrew Walker from the University of Manchester, who's one of our speakers here. And he really gave us the idea of, um, you know, that to be a developed country in the 21st century, you really need to have a carbon fibre furnace. And that really seeded the idea. And, and since then we've been working working uh, very hard to, to get this idea and make it become a reality. So, so the carbon fibre furnace you're talking about, that's one of the things that you're, one of the capabilities you're going to have at the ACFRF? That's correct. So it, it's going to be, um, the main focus of the facility will be the 20 tonne per annum plant. It's, it's quite a large plant because, and it has to be, because in order to do research that is relevant to the industry, you need to have the right uh, degree um, and scale of tensioners on the fibre. If you don't have the fibre tension right during processing, it's just not really relevant. Um, to production. So that was the smallest plant we could get and yet still have it be relevant to industry. And uh, it's going to be in a, a building that's going to be about 100 metres long and we're going to be turning white polyacrylonitrile into black carbon fibre and doing a whole lot of research projects around that. And so what the, the projects that you'll be working, can you tell us anything about the project, those projects? We've already started on some projects. We've got some great PhD students starting out on projects with us um, and CSIRO. They'll be co-supervised. Uh, one of them is on the surface treatment of fibre, which is an incredibly complex area because you want the surface treatment on the fibre to protect the fibre while you're weaving it into a preform or, or making a pre-preg out of it, but yet you want it to really promote adhesion between the fibre and the matrix as well. So it, it's a fine balance and a lot of the work that's been done in industry is top secret, it's not widely known um, and it's often applicable only to epoxy resin systems. We want to develop a toolkit that will be able to um, help us produce a sizing for any kind of matrix system that you can imagine. So protecting the fibres, is, is, that, is that similar technology to what would be needed for with glass fibre? Like if, with glass fibre, if you damage the, or you, you damage the fibres, you can drastically affect the, the properties? You can, and it, it's, it's not quite as, sens as sensitive with carbon fibre, but it, it is equally sensitive. And that's why we're really excited to be working with CSIRO under AFRIC because they have a whole range of technologies that they've developed for wool and protecting wool and, and making sure that you can wash wool and clothes. So um, we're very excited. We really think they can uh, give us a lot of additive capabilities in that area. 
And what are some of the other projects that you're going to be working on? So we're, we're really interested in um, weaving um, and making three-dimensional preforms for quite complex structures and that's a really interesting area because it's something that CSIRO and um, Deakin and the University of Manchester have been working on for a period of time with regards to cotton and wool and natural fibres but now here's a chance to apply it to a 21st century material so that's really exciting. Um, we, we want to continue doing our, our industry that's really relevant to industry um, our research and industry is um, very much telling us that they want to have better data around carbon fibre. They want to understand the properties and processing effects on the properties and we'll be doing some work around that. The properties that you get from carbon fibre, the tensile strength for example, if you look at the theoretical properties that you should get from graphitic structures, we're only at about five, maybe 10% of that theoretical maximum. So there's some work just starting to happen globally now on putting nano additives into the polyacrylonitrile um, precursor to enhance it and improve properties at extra notch. Okay, and you've obviously you've obviously got grants and things like that in in, in progress, waiting to get approved and things like that. We so have, you, yes. So you obviously look be looking to recruit some we expertise. Are. We're, we're actually looking for about seven or eight people at the moment at a range of different levels, um, and we're really excited to be able to add to our team. So if anybody's interested, perhaps in any of these positions, they can contact you contact guys. Contact me, yes. Yeah. Love to well, hear where from can me. they contact you? Um, at Deakin University. My email is um, bronwyn.fox at deakin.edu.au. Fantastic. All right, and uh, what, what do you see for the future of the Australian carbon fibre industry? Well, it was very interesting. Um, we just had a, an interesting talk from Dan Pickler, who's from AXO, the world's largest acrylic fibre producer. And he was saying that it will depend a lot on um, government legislation. We've got some big opportunities in Australia and in Victoria, particularly uh, in terms of um, alternative energy, uh, wind turbine blades. If we were to manufacture those here, that would be, we'd demand an enormous amount of carbon fibre for that particular application and that would grow an entire industry. So you were saying that it depends on government legislation. Do you, do you yes. think that perhaps Deakin and maybe VCAM could help lobby the, lobby the government to try and get the Absolutely. correct legislation in place? We have a number of government representatives here today who've heard that message, so I really hope they take that on board. Um, it, it's a very exciting time. We're, we're seeing a whole lot of innovations in terms of carbon fibre composites around the world. Electric vehicles, the Boeing 787, Airbuses, A350M, and um, we're just going to continue to see more. We're just at the start of it. All right. Well, let's let's hope that Australia will become a force to be reckoned with as far as carbon fibre is concerned. And we wish you all the best with the ACFRF and and the rest of your research into carbon fibre. And like and like we said, if there's anybody that might be interested in coming to work for you, might have some something to offer, they can get in contact with you. Please do. Okay. Thanks very much for your time, Bronwyn. Thank you very much.